Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries coming from, well, right here, the neighborhood of planet Earth. Because once again we have a relatively cool new discovery. A previously unknown quasi-moon of our own planet that's been silently flying next to our planet for nearly 60 years without anybody noticing. And so this little space rock, now referred to as 2025PN7, is the newest addition to Earth's special group of companions that we actually refer to as quasi-moons. And so in this video let's discuss exactly what we have right here, how this was discovered, and what we know about all of these objects already. But I guess first, so what exactly is a quasi-moon, and why is this discovery so fascinating? Well the first, I guess, so let's be very clear, this is not an actual moon. Or at least not the moon in the same way as this moon. Our moon is gravitationally bound to Earth, meaning that Earth's gravity is the main force controlling its orbit around us. A quasi-moon is different. It's an object that technically orbits the Sun, just like our own planet, but the thing is here it completes its orbit around the Sun in exactly the same amount of time as our own planet. Usually almost exactly one year. And so technically it's just sharing the orbit with our own planet, but it's still referred to as a quasi-moon for one important reason. From our perspective on our own planet, this object still appears to be circling around the planet, but just in a slightly different shape that does not resemble a simple circle. And the orbit here can be pretty unique and quite dramatic, but normally it resembles something like this. And so even though it looks like it's orbiting us, in reality it's mostly influenced by the Sun's gravity and not the gravity of Earth. As a matter of fact, it's not truly captured by Earth's gravity almost at all, and instead appears to have this synchronized dance with planet Earth around the Sun. And because of this, these orbits are usually not really stable and are technically temporary. So these objects don't stay with us forever and usually go somewhere else within a few centuries. And also it's important to note that this is different from a mini-moon. Mini-moons are small asteroids that are temporarily captured by Earth's gravity and orbit around the planet for some time. And these objects do become actual temporary moons that may stay here for several months or possibly even several years. But eventually the gravitational disruptions from the larger moon, or I guess the moon, dislodge them from here permanently and then they go somewhere else. And so in contrast, these quasi-moons never directly orbit our own planet and instead have their own solar orbits. And as you can see, as of 2025, Earth now has 8 officially confirmed quasi-satellites, few of which we've discussed before because some of them are really exciting. We'll discuss them in a few minutes. But I guess first let's talk about this new discovery, 2025PN7, and what we know about it so far. And so first of all, how exactly was this found? Well, it turns out that this was completely by accident and discovered by an amateur astronomer, and actually a French journalist on top of this, Adrien Coffinet, who posted this on August 30th on the minor planet mailing list, essentially informing everyone that there seems to be something else going on here and there seems to be a new object nobody knew existed. And this was initially spotted by the Panster Observatory in Hawaii on August 2nd. And within just a few days we received first confirmation of its existence, with a study right here confirming that this seems to be an asteroid, but also a quasi-moon of Earth. And what's truly mind-boggling here is that scientists digging through the data discovered that it seems to have assumed this orbit at least 60 years ago. In other words, it remained unseen by every single telescope on Earth for at least 6 decades, with some calculations even suggesting that it might have been much longer. But there's an obvious explanation for why we haven't seen it until now. It seems to be pretty small. Only about 19 meters or 62 feet across, and basically representing one of the smallest asteroids we've ever seen. This is basically the size of a bus, and is even smaller than the asteroid that exploded over Chelyabinsk in Russia in 2013. And so this is actually quite an accidental discovery. But based on its orbit, now we know that it seems to belong to a certain family of asteroids, referred to as the Arhuna asteroids, which are all near-Earth asteroids and all seem to have an orbit very similar to planet Earth. Although right now this group is pretty small and is also kind of mysterious because we're not sure where it came from. Although we'll talk about their potential origin in a few minutes. And so because it's so small and not very reflective, it is incredibly faint. Its brightness magnitude is about 26, and that means it's only visible with some of the most powerful optical telescopes, which is why nobody has seen it until now. And that of course also makes you wonder how many other similar rocks very likely share its orbit and remain completely hidden. But based on the orbital analysis, we know that during its closest approach to Earth, it seems to come within about 299,000 kilometers, 
or essentially one light second, but this only happens very rarely. On average, or usually, it's anywhere from 4.5 to 59 million kilometers away from us, and so it doesn't really get any gravitational effects from our planet or from the moon. But because of its size, it also seems to be the smallest and potentially the least stable known quasi-satellite, and so it's very likely going to be dislodged in the next 120 to 130 years. So this is probably going to be the first quasi-satellite to disappear and to go somewhere else. And so because of this discovery, our own planet now has eight quasi-satellites. And each new discovery here helps us understand the sheer variety and complex dynamics of these somewhat bizarre objects. And perhaps the most famous of these objects is the one you can learn about in one of the videos in the description, discovered in 2016. This is 2016 HO3, also known as Kamo Oelawa. Yeah, try saying that five times. And this object is super exciting because it seems to be relatively stable, and is predicted to stay in this orbit for at least several hundred years. But what makes it super special is one of the recent discoveries in regards to its surface composition. It seems to be almost identical to the moon, with studies suggesting that it potentially came from the moon and was possibly a fragment ejected from a powerful impact, very likely forming one of the craters, in this case the one known as Giordano Bruno. This crater formed millions of years ago. And this right here potentially presents us with one explanation for where most of these objects came from. In other words, a lot of these objects that seem to share very similar orbits have a very high chance of just being ejected rocks from the moon itself. And so a lot of these distant asteroids are just the result of moon's violent past. And what's really exciting is that within the next two years, we're almost certainly going to know for sure how this quasi-moon was formed and if it really came from the moon. And that's because China's Tianwen-2 mission that was launched very recently is planning to visit this rock and very likely collect one of the samples from its surface. And since it's going to bring them back in 2027, there's a very high chance that by then we're going to know exactly where it came from. Providing direct answers about its potential lunar origin, shedding light on the early solar system, and possibly linking a lot of these other quasi-moons to what's discovered on the surface of this object, and may one day help us figure out how our planet evolved early on and what impacts and collisions it experienced because many of these rocks potentially represent remnants of these ancient impacts. And so by studying their eccentric and sometimes chaotic orbits, it can help us understand the intricate gravitational interactions and figure out what collided with what. Naturally though, it also teaches more about these near-Earth asteroids and teaches us on how to track them, how to predict their collisions, and thus potentially avoid something risky and something dangerous, because one of these larger rocks could one day collide with our own planet. But right now, based on all of the discoveries of these quasi-moons and pretty much all of the near-Earth asteroids, we know that none of them pose any danger. And you can learn more about this concept and how we know all of this in one of the videos in the description. But because of new telescopes that are even more powerful, such as the Vera Rubin Observatory that just started operating, there's a very high chance that a lot of these observatories are going to be finding a lot more of these quasi-moons in the next few years, or even additional co-orbital objects that will help us understand the solar system even better and possibly help us solve a lot of secrets and a lot of mysteries that we currently do not understand. And so while this particular object is relatively small, somewhat insignificant, and will most likely dislodge and go somewhere else in the next 120 years, this discovery reminds us that even our immediate cosmic surroundings are full of surprises and contain a lot of valuable scientific clues about the entire solar system. Although I guess the next step is going to be naming it. Right now only one of the objects out of eight has a name, and so hopefully the other seven objects are going to receive names that are maybe just a little bit easier to pronounce. I mean like Bob or Steve or something, or something super simple. Because Kawalelowa is not a name I enjoy pronouncing every time I make a video about it. But yeah, if you have a really cool idea for a potential name for this object, I don't know, maybe leave it in a comment below. But anyway, until we learn something else, or until something else very similar is discovered in some of the future surveys, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more extra secret videos. Or you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.